As we head into the weekend, let me ask you something. Can happiness be taught? Yale certainly thinks so. Find out why Happiness 101 is the university's most popular course ever. Also, the curious case of the death of a judge, why the Supreme Court thinks Judge Loya's death does not merit an independent probe. And Turkish President Erdogan moves in for total control. Is Turkey heading for dictatorship? It's Friday, April 20th. The death of Judge Loya, allegedly under mysterious circumstances, will not be probed independently, the Supreme Court ruled on Thursday. Judge Loya died ostensibly due to a heart attack in December 2014 while in Nagpur attending a colleague's daughter's wedding. At that time, Loya was the CBI judge hearing the Surabuddin Sheikh fake encounter case in which BJP President Amit Shah was an accused. Amit Shah was later discharged by the judge who took over the case after Loya's death. Let's break it down for you. These five questions are key to understanding the case. Now, why did the Supreme Court say the case does not merit an independent probe? The court said there is no reason to disbelieve the sequence of events leading to the death as narrated by four judicial officers and the assertions of Bombay High Court Justices Bhushan Gavai and Sunil Shukre who were present when Judge Loya died. Who had alleged foul play in Judge Loya's death? A journalistic investigation which included video testimonies of Judge Loya's family members published in the caravan in November 2017 raised questions of possible foul play in his death. Some of the inconsistencies in the official version of how Judge Loya died included the time of death, for instance, in the document. Inconsistencies in what the postmortem said about external injuries, the clothes he was wearing, with the condition in which the family was given the body and the clothes the judge was wearing. Chief Justice, were there other unexplained deaths of people related to this case? The Congress party in January this year alleged that two confidants of Judge Loya died under mysterious circumstances. Kapil Sibyl claimed that in his interactions with a whistleblower in the case, lawyer Satish UK, he learned that before his death, Judge Loya was given a draft order with instructions to approve it before the 31st of October 2014. He further claimed that Satish UK was introduced to Judge Loya by advocate Shrikant Khandalkar and retired district judge Prakash Thombre. And Judge Loya had sought their help in dealing with the alleged pressure he was facing to exonerate the accused. Judge Loya died in December 2014. Sibyl alleges Shrikant Khandalkar died under mysterious circumstances a year later. Khandalkar Sahab ko art story building se district court mein gira diya gaya aur unki maut ho gayi. A Times of India report filed then states his family is suspecting foul play in his death. The report highlights Khandalkar's role in filing public interest litigations in the irrigation scam. Retired district judge Prakash Thomre died in 2016 while on a train journey. Suna hai ke wo ek railway journey kar rahe the, upper berth se gir gaye aur unki spinal cord toot gayi aur unki mrityu ho gayi. Satish UK too, Sibyl claimed, is under threat. What is the status of the Surabuddin Sheikh fake encounter case that Judge Loya was hearing at the time of his death? On Wednesday, one more key witness in the case turned hostile, taking the count of hostile witnesses in the case to 50. 15 people have been discharged in the case so far, including Amit Shah, then Minister of State for Home Gujarat, Gulabchand Kataria, then Home Minister of Rajasthan, and top cops like DG Vanzara and Rajkumar Pandian. What is the Surabuddin Sheikh fake encounter case? Surabuddin Sheikh was shot dead in November 2005 by the Gujarat police who claimed he was a lashkar e taiba terrorist. A special investigation team set up by the court later found that Sheikh, his wife Kausar B and associate Tulsi Ram Prajapati had actually been detained by policemen three days earlier when they were travelling on a bus from Hyderabad to Sangli. The SIT found that Sheikh's was an extrajudicial killing. It dismissed the allegation that he was a terrorist. 
Kosabi was also killed by the Gujarat police. A year later, Prajapati, an eyewitness in the case, was shot dead by the Gujarat police at a village near the Gujarat-Rajasthan border. Amit Shah was Minister of State for Home in Gujarat when the encounter took place in November 2005. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, in what's being viewed as an urgent attempt to consolidate power, has called for snap elections. Turkey will now go to polls on the 24th of June, close to 18 months earlier than scheduled. The election will complete Turkey's transition from a parliamentary democracy into an executive presidency. The change began last April when Turkey voted on a referendum to bolster presidential power, which so far had only been a nominal position. The president, or Erdogan, now has complete power over the economy, the military, can appoint judges, dissolve parliament at will, and has an indefinite term limit. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, father of Turkey, carved a secular nation in 1923 in his 15-year reign, he banned headscarves, brought mosques under government control and liberated women. Five decades after his death, Turkey was mired in corruption, confusion and soaring inflation rates. Erdogan and his Justice and Development Party secured a sweeping win in the 2002 election. As Prime Minister, he stabilized the economy but also reintroduced fundamentalist Islamic laws. The polls will happen under a state of emergency, which has been extended since a July 2016 military coup in which 241 people were killed and 2,194 others injured. The coup has been followed by an unprecedented crackdown on academics and journalists. Life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness are the inalienable rights mentioned in the United States Declaration of Independence. And it is this pursuit of happiness that Yale University's Dr. Laurie Santos hopes to simplify in the college's most popular course ever. 1,200 students have signed up for Psychology and the Good Life, a course on, well, how to be happy. The course promises to help break down the intangible concept of happiness into bite-sized bi-weekly classes where you are literally your own lab rat. But that being said, can happiness be learned and graded? Folks are usually about as happy as they make their minds up to be, said Abraham Lincoln. Yet, for several people today, the pursuit is looking about as difficult as Super Mario World's final level. According to a 2013 Yale Council research, more than half of Yale students seek constant therapy to cope with, well, existence. That's perhaps an explanation for why more and more students are looking for textbook answers. And it isn't just this course which is available on Coursera, if you're interested, by the way. You can also check out Indian School of Business, A Life of Happiness and Fulfillment. Marketing Professor Dr. Rajagopal Raghunathan puts happiness nine modules and seven sins away. But can classes help us harness our chi? Think about it and miss us a little while we meet you across this weekend.